don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. Sing that church. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop. He never stops. You never stop. My God never stops. Even when.
Every hand's lifted up to one side. Be magnified, O Lord. You are highly exalted. And there is nothing you can do. O Lord, my eyes are on you be magnified oh lord we magnify this morning we have come to the house of the lord to worship and to magnify him we have not come for anything else 
other than to worship this Jesus from our hearts. Open your hearts. Pour out your hearts. Bring it before Jesus and say, we have come to worship. Everyone worshiping. We take our offices seriously. We take our schools and institutions seriously. This morning, take the time of worship very seriously. We have come to give him the worship, give him the honor, give him the praise that he desires. Let's sing that once again. I want the church to sing even a bit more louder, if you can, please. Be my... Can we go with full, full, full rhythm? Without the... Be my, it's, I think we are finding it tough to sing with the auto rhythms. Mm. Be magnified, O oh Lord. Connected to the UPS power. You are highly exalted And there is nothing you can do Lord, my eyes are on you Be magnified Oh Lord, be magnified. Come on, lift it up. Be magnified. Be magnified. Oh Lord, you are highly exalted. And there is nothing you can do. Lord, my eyes are on you, be magnified, oh Lord, be magnified, be magnified, even more louder for the glory of God. You are highly exalted And there is nothing And there is nothing you can do Oh Lord, my eyes are on you Be magnified Oh Lord, be magnified Magnified, oh Lord, be magnified, oh Lord, be magnified, be magnified, oh, be magnified, oh Lord. You are highly exalted. You are highly exalted. And there is nothing you can do. Oh Lord, our eyes are on you. Be magnified. Oh Lord, be magnified. Oh Lord, can you all purposefully open your mouth and praise Him for a moment, please? The Bible says. Our Lord is seated on our praises. Our Lord is seated on our praises. So worship Him. Worship Him and give Him the glory. Praise Him. Praise Him. Purposefully open your mouth loudly and praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. The Bible says He's enthroned on our praises. This morning as you praise Him. You will feel His mighty presence, His glory, 
His wonderful power all over you. Come on, church. Open your mouth and worship Him. 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 Every eye closed and opening your mouth and worshiping Jesus. Tell Him that I love you. You are magnificent God. You are a wonderful God. You are an all-powerful, omniscient God. Come on, praise Him. Praise Him for who He is. We have not come to the church just to receive something from the Almighty God, but to tell the Almighty, Yes, Lord, it is who You are. 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 Even more louder, can you all open your mouth and praise Him, praise Him, praise Him. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Praise you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you, Holy Spirit. We thank you for your beautiful presence this morning. Holy Spirit, speak to us. Let your wisdom be imparted onto our lives. In Jesus' precious name we pray. And the third says, Amen. 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 Give a good clap offering to Jesus, please. Shout a big hallelujah. Okay, please be seated in God's presence. Good morning. Welcome to the English service of our Hope in Jesus Apostolic Church of Christ in Electronic City, Bangalore. Greetings to all of you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I hope all of you are doing fine and blessed by the Almighty God. If so, lift up your hands and say, I am doing well, I am blessed and I am fine by God's grace. Come on, confess that I am blessed and I am fine by God's grace. At another beautiful Sunday that the Holy Spirit is giving us to come into His presence and uh, worship and to learn the Word of God and to adore Him. What a great privilege that we are having to come to God's presence and to be blessed. I hope that as you spend time in God's presence, as you worship Him, as you adore Him, as you learn the Word of God, the Holy Spirit will manifest the power of Lord Jesus Christ in your life. And if you believe it, you can say an Amen. Not only that, when we come closer to Lord Jesus Christ, it is so beautiful to experience Him more personally, more wonderfully and more beautifully in our lives that in every dimension of our life, we can truly say, I am blessed by Lord Jesus Christ. I'm saying that again, in every dimension of your life, say with me, every dimension of your life, every sphere of your life, every realm of your life, you would be able to truly say that I am blessed. How many of you are saying that I am growing in the grace, wisdom and knowledge of Lord Jesus Christ? Wow, fantastic. I hope that there are practical changes in your life. So when the wisdom of God is manifesting, there will be changes in your physical life, in your office, in your thinking pattern, in your home, the way that you speak, the way that you study, there will be definite changes. And if the changes are not really happening, then we really need to check whether you are actually learning the word of God or not. Okay, this morning I want to talk to you about seven blessings of wisdom in your life. I want to talk to you about seven blessings of godly wisdom in your life. I encourage everyone to write notes. I grew up as a pastor's son. I used to write, write, write during those days and today the Holy Spirit is bringing all that out, whatever we wrote and whatever we, we learn. So I encourage parents also, whenever you send your children to the church, make sure that they have the Bible, they have a book and they have a pen so that they can write everything and note it. They can go home and study and learn the word of the Almighty God. Okay, the first blessing that God gives you when you have godly wisdom in your life. Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 22 onwards. 1 Corinthians 1, 22. Jews request a sign, Greeks seek after wisdom. But verse number 23 says, but we preach Christ the crucified to Jews a stumbling block and to Greeks a foolishness. But those who are called Jews, Greeks, Christ, the power of God and wisdom. Paul is talking about a category of people. On one side, they want signs. They want signs to prove that there is God. They want signs of blessing. They want signs of miracles, healings and so on. On other sides, they don't want any sign. They want all the scholars. That is why you have this Greek system being followed and we used to learn, right? In the schools, 8th standard and all, we used to learn about all these Greek gods. Very tough to pronounce their names and to remember who is the God of love, who is the God of hatred. And then if at all, uh, when we were in college, we were having a crush on someone, we will 
will start thinking whether that God of love will send that arrow. You remember those stories? Did you all go to school? Thank you. So all these things, for Greeks it was wisdom. But for Jews it was sign. But Paul comes up with a higher revelation and he says, for people who believe in Jesus, when you get godly wisdom, it is just not some wisdom like the Greek people that they are asking for. The Holy Spirit will do signs, wonders and miracles in your life and prove the power of Lord Jesus Christ. If you are believing it, you can say an amen. Now you never thought that the wisdom of God can release power in your life, right? Because we did not know that. Because you did not have the wisdom. Many times we come to God not understanding how this wonderful legal system of the almighty God works that is why Paul says one thing only we are preaching we are not preaching about the birth of Lord Jesus Christ we are not preaching about the life of Lord Jesus Christ we are not preaching about the ministry of Lord Jesus Christ only one thing we are preaching we are preaching the crucified Lord Jesus Christ because it is wisdom and it is a power why the crucifixion of Lord Jesus Christ because that is where it all happens and say with me that is where it all happened that is where your sins were forgiven that is where your sickness was healed that is where your curse was broken that is where your poverty was broken that is where your loneliness was gone that is where your rejections were gone that is where Jesus crushed the devil on the cross that is where Jesus defeated death once and all for all so that you and me can have an eternal life with Lord Jesus Christ come on if you're understanding it Clap your hands and give glory to Jesus. Then praise and praise and praise and give glory to Jesus this morning. So the wisdom of God releases the power of God in your life. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're not an ordinary person. Especially lean people can say, though I may look lean, I'm very powerful. I was looking at who all are the people going to confess. Some people who are 100 kilos are also looking at the other people and saying, Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, you really do not know who I am. Because anyone having the wisdom of God is powerful. Now let me bring it to the practical aspect, okay? The practical aspect of having wisdom. Now when God gives you wisdom, when there is a trouble in your life, what is your thinking pattern telling you? Let's assume that a small tumor came in your hand. Let's assume, okay? What is your brain telling you? Your brain will tell you, wow, tumor means cancer. That is how we all learn these days. So let me quickly go to HCG hospital in Bangalore. Or there is an another speciality, what is it, cytocare? There is an another cytocare hospital specially for cancer in Bangalore and treat it immediately. That is for Greek people. That is for the Jewish people. But the anointed people of God who have the wisdom of God, they will look at the cancer and say, this will be healed because of the cross of Lord Jesus Christ. There is power in the blood of Jesus. There is power in the wounds of Jesus. There is power in the stripes of Jesus. And the moment last week we heard about faith and the moment that faith is released, you will be surprised to see in another few days that entire tumor has disappeared from your body. Come on. If you want to believe it, you can say an amen. The wisdom of God works contrary to the wisdom of man. Now that is where the problem as Christians we have. We cannot we cannot publicly go and tell this, right? Pastor, what will they think? What will my science teacher think? What will my personal doctor think? That is where you have to have the power of the Holy Spirit which brings into execution the wisdom of the Almighty God. Let's suppose an another challenge of financial difficulty. You know, you lose your job, you have a financial difficulty. What is your brain telling you? Let me apply for a personal loan. They won't give anything for free. No bank gives you anything for free. The moment you apply for personal loan P itself, they know how to extract more money than they gave you. But if you have the wisdom of God, what will you say? And my God shall supply all my needs according to His riches in His glory. I will not borrow. I will not take money from the bag. I will not take the personal loan. I will wait upon the Lord. And those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength because on the cross of Calvary, Jesus became poor so that God can bless me and make me rich. Amen. The wisdom of God releases the power of the cross of Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to read one more verse to understand this. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 
at verse number 21 first corinthians chapter 1 verse number 21 for since in the wisdom of god the world through wisdom did not know god it pleased god through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe now the wisdom of man can never be equal with the wisdom of god Please don't try to equate any of the wisdom of man with wisdom of God because the Bible says if at all God had foolishness that would still be higher than the highest wisdom of man whereby God does not have foolishness but when the wisdom of God is released as the spirit of wisdom practically in your life there should be changes otherwise there's no point in coming to the church there's no point coming and listening to pastor anish manoj stevens message and saying god give me wisdom god give me wisdom if there is no change practically in your life you agree with me or not now practically we start with the necessities of life we start with the things dealing with our life and paul says in verse number 18 there is a message about the cross the cross to foolishness is perishing but those who are being saved it is the power of the almighty to god can i bring you to a different dimension thinking pattern don't think that i am brainwashing you a real christian for every event will focus first on the cross traditional christians when we were traditional christians we had the cross on our neck we had the cross on our car we had the cross on our ring we had the cross in the church everywhere cross but never applied the cross in our life everywhere cross but never apply the cross only when fear comes we will take that cross and look at satan and say satan go away go away there is power in the cross of jesus wisdom reveals the power of lord jesus christ from the cross there has been a divine exchange on the cross for example anyone struggling with sin anyone struggling with watching pornography anyone struggling with living relationships anyone struggling with extra marital affairs if you can look at the cross of jesus i am telling you the holy spirit will deliver you even without your permission oh you're not saying amen to it let me repeat that the holy spirit will deliver you the holy spirit will break the power of sin in your life even without asking you because your focus is on the power of the cross of lord jesus christ that's what wisdom can do lift up your hands and say god thank you for your wonderful wisdom that is why people with godly wisdom their thinking pattern is different from the world thinking pattern it is not about i told you in the beginning itself it is not about architectural brain operating like in the old testament it is not about managing a land it is about understanding the heart and the will of the almighty god the bible says my righteous will live by faith lift up your hands and say we will live by faith and not by sight how does faith operate according to last sunday's message faith operates because of godly wisdom wisdom releases faith faith takes you into wow glory wisdom releases faith faith takes you into glory so people struggle with faith especially i have seen that born again people are the one who has lesser faith than the traditional christians there was once upon a time when born again people were full of faith they never used to take medicines any kind of a sickness comes they will say i'll be healed they used to conquer death but we have come and reached in such a place where there is absolutely no faith in born again people the moment we have a small pain in left side itself we will think some tumor that is where i want you to pray that the holy spirit will give you wisdom in your life that the next time you have an issue you will not be thinking like the worldly people you will apply the wisdom of god faith will come the glory of the almighty god will be manifested so the first blessing of wisdom is releasing the power of the cross of lord jesus christ what all do you have on the power of the cross of lord jesus christ the bible says on the cross sin's power was defeated once and for all do you really believe it oh you're not believing it do you really believe it or not okay isaiah chapter 53 verse number 5 the bible says jesus was crushed because of our sins romans 3:25 jesus was crucified so that he could release righteousness onto us for all the sins that were previously committed Hebrews 9:28 Jesus suffered on the cross to bring salvation listen very carefully 
How many of you struggle with sin in your life even now? No, no one would lift the hands, right? But I am looking for a honest and a truthful church. Only Jonathan is lifting the hand. How many of you are struggling with sin? Only children. This is why Jesus said, these children will first enter the kingdom of God. We will all come and say, I went to Anish Pastor's church for 10 years, 15 years. The Lord will say, I did not even know you. But all these children will enter. Jesus said, be like little children to enter. All of us struggle with the power of sin even now, right? Because we live in a sinful world. That is where you need the revelation of the power of cross of Lord Jesus Christ. When there is a temptation yielding you to sin, immediately you should not be thinking that I should win over the temptation. You should first think, Jesus has delivered me from every power of sin and His righteousness is in me. His Holy Spirit is in me. His power is in me. His wisdom is in me. I am telling you, you will not fall into sin. Oh, you are not saying an Amen. Many things on the cross, your sickness, your healings, curse breakings, any blessing that you want what happened on the cross, God's wisdom will release onto your life. Next time you have a problem, don't immediately cry out, Amma, Abba, like that. First come to the cross. Ask the Lord, Lord, I'm going through a problem. According to the wisdom of God, do I have a solution from the cross? You will be surprised. The Bible has solution to all your problems from the cross of Calvary. And the moment you come out of the cross of Calvary, you will be a victorious person. You are not a failure, but you are a victorious person. If you believe it, lift up your hands and say an amen and an amen. The Bible says, when wisdom of God is given, you become like Jesus. Or in my higher English, I should say, you become a Jesus. You're not believing it, right? 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 30. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 30. 1 Corinthians 1, verse number 30. But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became a wisdom for us from God, and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption. The wisdom Paul is talking and saying three things are released for you on the cross. Number one, righteousness. Number two, sanctification. Number three, redemption. God has released his righteousness onto you. The other day I was teaching in the revival nights and I told you there are two people who always wants to find fault in you. What are those names? Anyone remembers those two names? There are two people in the Bible who always wants to find fault with you, not Satan and God. The prophets and the law. I spoke about the book of Romans. So the Bible says, the law is looking at Janish, how I can find a fault. And the prophets, the old covenant writers, they are all looking at you to find a fault. But that's where Jesus comes and says, he is made righteous because of the power of cross of Lord Jesus Christ. You should come to that revelation. That does not give you the license to sin. But every fault that the, the law or the prophet would find out in your life, when the wisdom of God comes, three things happen. You become the righteousness, you get sanctified, and you get redeemed by the blood of Jesus. I do not know about you. This is a very high privilege that the Holy Spirit is giving in our life. This is a very very high privilege that the Holy Spirit is giving in our life. Number one, we have been made righteous by the Almighty God. We are sanctified by the Almighty God and we are redeemed. Can I explain those three things? Okay. What do you mean by being made righteous? According to the legal system, Anish Mano Stephen is a sinner. But because Jesus took my punishment on the cross, now I cannot be punished again for the previously committed sins because of his punishment. He was not a sinner because he substituted for me. Because of that, God says, you are made righteous. In the Bible it says, he erased everything which was written contrary to you. So in, in simple English terms, let's assume that there was an FIR put against you. How many of you know what is an FIR? Wow, at least that much wisdom is there. What is the full form of FIR? Let me, no, hold on, hold on. Let me ask those who lifted the hands. What is the full form of FIR? Koshi brother's son, he never went to the police station. So he did not know F, what is a full form of FIR. First investigation report. So, 
first information report that's fir so the police writes an fir it actually becomes something which is legally written against you it is different from a police complaint anyone can give a police complaint but the moment the police writes an fir it is something which is legally written against you satan was writing from the time you were born he started writing like let's assume genesis daughter the devil is writing kuttu came to the church for anish pastor's fasting prayer made noise irritated everyone kuttu got asuya she got jealous when her mummy took in another baby devil is writing everything right from the time he is writing he is writing 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 he has a long list and finally when you come to lord jesus christ and you are born again jesus erases everything what was written right from your birth till the point of time when you had the wisdom of the almighty god you should understand this great privilege if christians really understood this they would have been full of joy imagine there was an fir put against you in electronics in the police station and you are so terrified you are coming to church and say pastor please pray please pray please pray and one day you hear that the police has squashed it and they have torn that fir and put it and then you will be so happy that you will come to church and give 10000 rupees offering but when i talk about being born again when i talk about the wisdom of god or oh really lift up your hands and say thank you for the wisdom of the almighty god so the moment you know that you are made righteous the moment that you know that the fir has been torn off you will be very careful in the ways that you walk in the statutes of god this is where god told in the book of proverbs ask for wisdom so that you will walk in obeying the commandments of the almighty god Amen. number 2 you were sanctified why are you sanctified simple terms i want to ask you a question does the holy spirit come and dwell in only a holy person or does the holy spirit come and dwell in a sinful person give me some answers talk to me please holy person or a sinful person huh now if you say holy i will ask you where is the holiness so no one in our church will say holy the holy spirit does not come and dwell in the holy place first the holy spirit comes and dwells when a sinner repents he comes and dwells in that sinful person but the first thing that he does is he sanctifies that person for him to dwell in that place what was the first thing that you do when you came and sat on the chair in the church some of the chairs had this biscuit powders because kids are there right sometimes they will pour some juice so the first thing if if you came in good senses some people will like and then they'll come and sit then they'll understand somebody else's bible was there but people with common sense will first come and check whether the first of all i will check because of my weight first of all whether the chair is strong and then i'll check whether it's clean then only will we'll, normally i do like this i'll just put my hand and check whether there's something and then sit this is exactly how the holy spirit does the holy spirit will come into your life he will first sanctify you he himself will sanctify he will make you a clean vessel he will take all the dirt all the sin all the bad past all the bad memories from your life he will sanctify it and then he will occupy the place so that you can be the body of the holy spirit that sanctification what is redemption i'll tell you a story many years back there was a boy called john in the united states of america the americans hobbies are so different from our hobbies their hobbies are more creative than our south indian hobbies when we were a child what was your hobby brother sibi jacob picking up stones and playing seven dice tishk but <laughs> you think about all the hobbies that we had when we were young nothing was useful but the kids growing in the developed nations are not like that from the time that they have some hobbies they'll be much more innovative so this boy john he was always fascinated in making boats and uh, attaching that and then taking it to the river so one day he made a mediocre size of a boat when one person can actually sit and go on it so he took it 
to the river. It was a fantastic one. He called all his friends and their parents and he said, look, I have made this. It's going to work wonderfully. And he started operating it with the remote. But the boat, when a tide came, his remote was not able to communicate with the boat and the boat was washed away. John felt very sad. Very sad. He was broken. Because that was his innovation. That was his beautiful creation. He stopped making boats after that. John worked for another company. He became a father. He became a grandfather. 75 years, one day he was walking with his grandson for shopping. As he was walking along the streets, he saw an antique shop. So John always liked antique ships and boats. And it was written, antique shops which has boats and ships. So he went inside. There were so many boats. It's a big gallery of so many boats. He was watching one by one and one by one. He comes to a particular boat and he sees, I think I have seen this boat somewhere. Memories went back many years. This was the same boat which he had made. And he looked closely. His name was carved beautifully on that boat. He told the shopkeeper, hey, this is my boat. The shopkeeper looked like this. You imagine you go to an antique shop and you tell them that an antique piece belongs to you. What would they think? They'll first itself, they'll call hundred because antique things are expensive, right? Like jewelry shop. If you go to a jewelry shop and say, Oh, this mala belongs to me. They'll immediately call the police only. So that person looked like, he said, This is mine. I made it. But he said, No. You know, I bought it from a vendor. It's been not moving for years. He said, This is my name. The shopkeeper said, No way. It could be yours. But now this is mine. And John asked, What is the price? And he quoted in millions of dollars. John went back and sold every property that he had. Brought that money that the shopkeeper asked. Gave it to the shopkeeper and took that boat in both hands because it was so dear to him. This is what happened on the cross of Calvary according to the wisdom of God. That once we were sinners, but Jesus paid the last drop of the blood and redeemed all of us and made us his sword that we might live for his will. If you believe it, lift up your hands and say an amen. Are you understanding the practical applications of the wisdom of God? God has called you to be righteous, to walk in sanctification and to be the redeemed of Lord Jesus Christ. Let's look at the other blessings of the wisdom of the Almighty God. We are looking at the seven blessings of the wisdom of the Almighty God. Praise you, Holy Spirit. Number two. Psalms chapter 104, verse number 24. Psalms 104 and verse number 24. Psalms 104 and verse number 24. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works in wisdom. You have made them all. The earth is full of your possessions. Can you bring the TPT translation of this verse? <clears throat> Psalms 104, 24 onwards. O oh Lord, what an amazing variety of all of you have created. Wild and wonderful in this world you have made while wisdom was there at your side. This world is full of so many creatures, yet each belongs to you. Wisdom of God releases the power of creation in your life. It is a very big blessing that the Lord is giving you. Why the power of creation? Not to innovate, not to find out through Big Bang Theory, not to create a dinosaur, not to create something for the world. The power of creation operates when there is something to be created in your life. When you speak it out itself according to the wisdom of God, the creation will happen in your life. It could be an organ missing in your body. It could be a job opening for you. You are searching for a job and absolutely there's no job profile for you in Bangalore. But you speak the creation, it will be created for you. You're, you're not saying an amen. You're not saying an amen. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure whether you're understanding the power of what I'm telling you. There is power of creation in the wisdom of God. Many times, you know, we say, oh pastor, that was my destiny. Don't say like that. 
Pastor, that so happened, it became my destiny. Don't say like that. You can change your destiny according to the plan and will of the Almighty God when you speak out words of creation in Jesus' mighty name. I have experienced this many times in my life. The words that you speak carry creation power. That is why we say, don't speak words of negativity. I went yesterday, I'm on fasting with my wife. All of us pastors are all fasting. Many. How many of you are fasting by the day, 16th day, growing strong? Wow, fantastic. So I was having an ABC juice and suddenly that shopkeeper is asking, who ordered death by chocolate? And I was like, some people in our church's name suddenly came into my mind, death by chocolate. So what's happening? The devil is controlling the world. The devil is speaking the destiny of the people. But when you have the wisdom of God, your mouth will always speak life and life in abundance because there is this creative power of the Almighty God. I want to tell you mothers, especially those children who have developmental issues, every day, at least there is one prayer request that I get about developmental issues these days. Every day, this morning, around three o'clock or four o'clock, or maybe now when I checked, there was a mother from US who sent me a message, Pastor, my son is three years. He does not speak. We sent him to the daycare, but it did not matter. He's all lonely. He sits in one corner. He does not talk to anyone. He does not play. He does not have friends. I'm telling you, precious mummies, you can create the speaking work in your children because the wisdom of God releases the power of creation in your lives. Come on, say an amen. My question is, how can God's creation be different from your creation when God created everything by the power of the word? When you have a sickness, I've heard a pastor preaching, God does not heal your organs, God replaces your organs. You know, you buy an expensive car. Okay, let's uh, tell me one expensive car name. Don't tell me Marathi 800 and all. Rolls Royce. Ah, who are all these people? Kartave, you are all loga mohangal maripote. Mercedes. Rolls Royce. Now you buy a Rolls Royce. Okay. And there is a problem with your car. Glow plugs. Glow plug is the one which heats up the diesel and the air to fire at the right time so that the vehicle's performance gets better. Let's assume that the glow plug of that vehicle went off. And now you take it to a workshop, a local workshop. What will they say? We will somehow try to repair it and fix it. Don't worry, we no need to change, we will try to repair. They will open everything. You would have tried to save some money, but at the end of the day, in another six months, the whole engine will break down. But if you go to the Rolls Royce showroom, they will never touch anything and try to repair it. They say, replace. Lift up your hands and say, no more repairs, only replace. Come on, say that. No more repairs, only replace. So that pastor was preaching, if you have an issue with an organ in your body, don't pray, Lord, please rectify my thing. Ask and create new organs in your body. You're not saying an amen. Uteruses were created in Bangalore because in Bangalore there was a woman, a child was born in Bedeleji Bangalore Church without a uterus. Can you believe it? Tell me scientifically, tell me according to the wisdom of a man, how can a baby be born without a uterus? That's where I'm telling you, the church needs to enjoy the blessings of the wisdom of God. We don't think like human beings. We don't think like normal people. We think like fools. But it is the wisdom of God which is getting manifested in our lives. You have the power of creation in your life. You can create your job opportunities. You're not believing it. You can create your job opportunities. You can create your victories when you speak them according to the wisdom. Now listen, the wisdom is always the will of God. Now don't, don't get hear my message and tomorrow bring out all your desires and say, Pastor said, just say that it will happen. It won't happen. If it is the will of the Almighty God, if you have recognized and understood the will of God, when you speak, it will come forth. Many times in our ministry, in our life, what we have spoken has come forth. 
small small wishes also the lord can do i was sharing a testimony in my core team the other day remember january 28th we had the family conference how many of you came for the family conference many of you came you are blessed so on that same day the sports day for paul was kept Paul had been practicing for the last two years to win in the running race because when he was in Vibgyar, he got first. So after that, once you get first, you always want to be first. So last two years, he's running, running in the home, running in the apartment and practicing and the sports day comes on the family conference day. And guess what the father will say? No sports day, only church. That's the wisdom of God. I'm telling you, parents, operate in the wisdom of God. If you set the priority of your children to follow Jesus, days will come when you will see the goodness and mercy of God following your children and your generations. I said, no, he was sad initially. I said, no, Paul, let's not go there. But God will give you another opportunity. I did not know what opportunity. In that opportunity, you will succeed. So relax. And in my mind, I thought, poor boy, to make him at least happy, I will get to a stationery shop and buy a medal and give him at least. We spoke. And you know what happened? Few weeks back, they sent an email saying that there is one more sports day. And yesterday he went, 34 students were participating. Boys or girls or only boys? Only boys, you have more details. Both? Both participated, Paul came out first. You can create, you can create, you can create avenues for your children. You can create the job opportunities because you have the wisdom of the Almighty God. You know, the Bible says, He is the one who called things out from void. Amen. Now, the same wisdom is in you. Wow. Your wedding is not happening. Call it in 2023, it will happen. Who said amen? I heard a loud amen from pastor said. <laughs> All those wedding, those marriages are over at this wedding. Huh? He said, where is his wife? <laughs> I'm realistically telling you, how many of you want your marriages to happen in 2023? Let me see show me your hands please show me your hands i really want to really want to pray for you wow lift it up what is there to be ashamed marriage is not a sin one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve in jesus name come on let's declare in jesus name we call out the weddings for them in jesus name let more glorious weddings happen let it happen in jesus name even when we don't see anything like fools applying the wisdom of the almighty god we call out glorious weddings the perfect weddings in jesus name come on church say an amen clap your hands and give glory to jesus say an amen 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 Psalms 104 verse number 25 onwards the TPD translation and then there is the seal see so vast so wide so deep swarming with countless forms of sea life both small and great how many of you have aquariums in your home is it easy to maintain sea is the aquarium of God now keep reading <laughs> now keep reading Trading ships glide through the heights. He said, look, these are the massive whales bounding upon the waves. And one translation says they are toys. Did you know that God had toys? The ships in the seas are God's toys. For us, the ships are so huge. We get fascinated. You know, I follow a YouTuber called as Santapan. He's now in Antarctica. So he got into that ship from Argentina to Antarctica. He's a Malayali from Trishur. And he was looking at that glass and saying, Oh my Lord, I never thought these glasses are so huge. And I also never thought, because I have never gone in a luxury ship before, I also never knew that the glasses, the windows of the seas are bigger than the glasses of the room. So beautiful the ship is. But the Bible says there's a toys. Lift up your hands with me, toys. So what's the aquarium of God? Seas. And what are the toys of God? Ships in the seas, whales, toys. Next verse, please. All creates waiting expectantly for you to give their food as you determine. So you all feed your fishes on time, right? 
Now they are looking unto God to feed them. Okay, next verse. You come near, they all gather around feasting from your open hands. I told you, right? It's an aquarium. You, you didn't believe, right? Now it's like, it's true. God opens the hand with the fish food. Ah, suddenly everyone will come. And each is satisfied from your abundant supply. Our fishes are not satisfied. Because some will get more, some will not get. But with God, everyone is getting. Next verse. But if you were to withhold from them and turn away, they will all panic. And when you choose to take your breath, and each one dies and returns to his nest. This great creator is described. Sea is an aquarium for him. And ships are toys for him. And then you are all worrying about your life. This creation, creative, great God is in control of your life more than the fishes in the seas. Amen. That is why Jesus, when he came to the new covenant, he said, Look at the birds of the air. Look at the fishes of the seas. Who is feeding them? And Jesus told his disciples, if I am feeding them and taking care, how much more I want to take care of you all. Amen. Oh, you didn't say an amen. You didn't, you didn't believe it. You are not believing it. You are more valuable than any other great creation in the whole world can. If you realize that your relationship with God will be strong, your faith level will be strong, you will stand strong according to the wisdom of the Almighty God. So number one, I said, what is the first blessing of the wisdom of God? Power. Number two, creation. When you have wisdom, you can create. Say with me, you can create. Can you do that? Can you do that? Many of your blessings are not coming because you're speaking negative about it. Pastor, I can't get married because I don't have money. Huh? Then why did you come to the Lord? For a Christian, no one needs money to get married. Marriage is free according to the word of God. Only Pastor Chayadhan said, Amen. Number three, the third blessing of the wisdom of God is that the wisdom of God makes you like Jesus. First John chapter 4 verse number 17. First John 4 17. First John chapter 4 and verse number 17. Love has been perfected among us in this that we may have the boldness in the day of judgment uh, but as he is uh, so we are in this world. Do you know that the wisdom of God will make you like Jesus? Christ like character. How many of you want Christ like character? Are you all sure? That's why we come to the church. Many problems are happening in our life, not because of the devil, because that we don't have a Christ-like character. You're not saying an amen. amen. What is the Christ-like character? Jesus said, if someone hits you on one cheek, but how does the woman in India, oh, my husband took his hand to hit me. Oh, I will not love him. Luckily, not many women are hitting husbands as of now. If things go like this in the world, it will become ulta in another 10 years. Many families break down because they do not operate in the wisdom of God. Husbands and wife are not able to love one another because there is no wisdom of God. They are not able to decide what is the will of God. But I pray God will release wisdom that all of you will be Christ-like. Lift up your hands and say Christ-like. Come on, once again say Christ-like, Christ-like. What is being Christ-like? Every reaction in your life should be like the reaction of Jesus. Every reaction. Every reaction. Every reaction. Jesus was handed over to the soldiers to be arrested when Judas betrayed him. Betrayed him. People can betray you in life. Your own people can betray you. In your offices, people can betray you. But the reaction that we have when someone betrays is so much of deep anger and toxic feelings in our heart. You agree? Some people even start praying, Lord, kill him. I've heard that. I've heard believers praying if they are intoxicated in the mind, Lord, kill him, finish off. You are a God. There are so many verses in the Bible which say that God will arise and the enemies will die. It is talking about the devil and not about that human being. Because Jesus said in the new covenant, love your enemies. Jesus said, Jesus said, if you are a Christ-like, you have that Christ-like reaction. 
but the reaction of Jesus you see always with a love always with love if this wisdom was applied and we had Christ like character imagine how beautiful your family lives will be you are not saying an amen. amen many times we pray for many families broken husband hitting wife wife hitting husband I thought that Kerala is God's own country only things happen bad in UP you open the Kerala newspaper these days father killed son son killed father son killed mother son ki mother killed son what is this we need the wisdom of God so that we will have Christ like character lift up your hands and say the wisdom of God releases Christ like character once again Christ like character another issue how many of you get angry with your children when you get angry where do you hit them mostly people hit them on their head and said talamanda ille you are speaking negative the bible says how to discipline children to take a stick and only give beatings in this place for anyone who makes issues in life that is why all our pastors have sticks at their home to discipline their children janish is already buying it for kuttu he is very angry that she is making noise in the church never hit your children unnecessarily don't speak bad words some people said nee enikano janichathu in malayalam if you are asking are you really born to be you are confessing that you are not their father it is an open door for the devil and it actually happens like that and they will develop characters which is not yours and then they will come back and say pastor please put my son's name in the 21 day fasting but he is not at all my character where was the christ like character in you that's where we need the wisdom of god what about in your business who was recently praying with me for a business without sin was someone from the church every business involves some or the other sin christ like character makes you understand not to lie yeah that was a prayer request a prayer request which was sent she is a sister from kerala so she sent me you know she told me that when you were married 14 years back and when you had come to thrissur or tiruvalla i had attended your meetings and i'm so happy that recently she came across my malayalam preachings on the fasting prayer and she said uh, i'm so thankful that how god is using you so i do a business so i replied to her sister i will definitely pray for your business she has to the insurance business get targets but i mentioned underneath make sure that no sin is involved god will bless the house of righteous just because everyone wants to meet the target and tell a lie and lure a customer into it people who do business with the wisdom of god will not be doing it but still they'll see seven fold greater blessings in their life come on if you believe with me clap your hands and give glory to lord jesus christ christ like character you can talk about it in many ways christ like character okay how many points did i say number 4 Proverbs chapter 8 verse number 15 let's go quickly now by me kings reign by rulers decree justice by princes rule and the judges of the earth rule wisdom takes you into an elevation in your life where you will become the source of wisdom to other people who are working along with you or whom people are reporting to you wisdom of god makes your teams the best in the coming days amen. no one said a name into it many people in bangalore call me and say pastor my team is a bad team you need the wisdom of god if you have the wisdom of god you will be surprised god will put you into a role of a king god will put you in the role of a justice god will put you in the leadership role where you will be surprised in the way that you deal with the people who are working with you who are reporting to you they will become excellent for the glory of our lord and savior jesus christ how many of you work with teams either reporting to you or working with you lift up your hands please wow many of you lift up your hands and say thank you jesus for the godly wisdom come on say that godly wisdom godly wisdom it's just not the tactics or the schemes that you're going to say or the plan the way that you talk itself will change the atmosphere of your team 
have you seen some teams working as if they they they, they are working as if something like an earthquake is going to happen today evening such is the way that the teams will be full shaking only one person will run there one person will hit the desk and call that thing especially in bpos support systems that is where you need the wisdom of god the moment the wisdom of god is released you will see how peacefully you are able to handle situations you are not saying an amen i will give you an example i joined oracle in 2007 and i was working as a project leader there <clears throat> so 2008 eight towards the end we had this i was in the core engineering team we never had to talk to the customers Uh, because there are three layers of support and then our mba people the business people and then only it comes then goes to the testing and then only it comes to the core engineering team but we had a number which should be displayed on the oracle website which will be contacted by the support it will be visible to the support when they have an emergency so it's by turn by turn three months three months there is a turn and finally my turn came so when i received it look at the wisdom of god when i received it i told my manager who stays in electronics today i'm praying one day he will be saved and he'll be the leader of our church so i told him he's from kerala i told him i will do anything but sunday i will not attend any call so you get additional payment for your uh, mobile bill and also your broadband also will be paid by the company on those three months I told Sunday I am in church. Morning five o'clock I'll go to the church. I'll come back only in the night. I won't attend the call. I won't pick up. My manager said, "Let's let's let's see how it goes. Don't worry. You don't pick up on Sundays. You will be surprised. Those three months, not even a single call came on a Sunday. Now that is not the miracle. Now after three months, this has to be given back." so time came to give me back so we are having a team meeting and everyone says don't take it from anish don't take it because the call comes to me also my team has to work he said let it be with that from 2009 beginning onwards till 2014 april till i resigned to come into full time ministry and become a pastor never did we get calls on a sunday because their wisdom of god helps you to reign over the situations You are not called to be fooled in your offices. You are called to be the reign as leaders in your offices. Maybe you may not have the designation of a project leader. So what? It's okay. No need to be a project manager to reign. You could be an associate. You could be an assistant. But when the wisdom of God operates, people will look onto you to for help. People will look onto you for advices because your presence will make things very much changed in your life. If you believe it, come on. You can say an amen and an amen and amen. Be magnified. I want the church to sing. You are highly beautiful and there is nothing Oh Lord my eyes are on you be magnified Oh Lord Sing that once again be magnified be magnified oh lord you are highly exalted you are highly exalted and there is nothing you can do oh lord my eyes are on you be magnified oh lord be magnified oh lord be magnified oh lord be magnified job chapter 29 verse number 3 and 4 job 29 verse number 3 and 4 are you learning something this morning sure will 2023 be different in your life wow job 29 verse number 3 and 
when his lamp shone upon my head and when his light walked through the darkness verse number 4 i was in the day of my prime and my friendly counsel of god was over my tent i like that word the friendly counsel of god was over my tent the wisdom of god releases friendly counsel say with me friendly counsel you know god's heart is a friendly counsel god is not a god sitting on heaven on a throne and sitting with 10 ak47s on both sides waiting to shoot all sinners that's how we portray god that's not the heart of god he is a friendly god he called abraham as his friend he spoke to Moses as friends speak to one another. When Jesus came into this world, he called Lazarus my friend. When Jesus was in this world, he called his disciples my friends. You know what is the friendly counsel of God? I want you to bring an example in your life where you have got a good advice from a good friend of yours. Think. Mostly it will happen only in college. 50% it will happen only in love relationship. The friend will say, Veno, Vendeo. You remember that? No need. She is not a good girl. Friendly counsel does not operate for examinations and all. Mostly in decision makings. But many times, good friends counsel have proven to be good. Now this is not just good friend. This is God the Almighty. And so Job says, I win over darkness when God's friendly counsel is over my tent. In other words, when heavenly wisdom is in your life, you will win over every schemes of darkness in your life. Is the devil trying to pull you down? Is the devil trying to defeat your house? Is the devil trying to steal, kill and destroy? Lift up your hands and say, the devil will not be victorious because the friendly counsel of the almighty God is there in my life. Come on, say that the friendly counsel of God is there in my life. Many people ask a question to God, right? God, what can I do now? How many of you have asked such a question? Only one to. I expected everyone to ask. Always asking always asking and every time we ask God especially in situations which cannot be dealt with human wisdom that's where the darkness goes away and the light of Lord Jesus comes in I was talking to a, a couple yesterday in our church when they said that the doctor said that the baby has uh, some kind of a sickness I, I was sharing the testimony when my elder daughter Carissa was born, a few months down the lane, she had this severe wheezing. And in the month of December, the wheezing went up very tough. She was not able to sleep. She was wheezing, wheezing. So my mother-in-law put much pressure on me and said, you have to take her to a home, your doctor. And uh, there were a few nurses attending our church at that point. That time, our church was in uh, either in Dhamamurthy Nagar, 2010, where was it? 11, Dhamamurthy Nagar. And Sansu, she was working as a nurse in Hosmet Hospital. She said, Pastor, I know a doctor. And uh, we went there. And the doctor tested my elder daughter, Carissa. And uh, he said some, some big name of a sickness, some acute bronchitis, I remember. There's one more name to that. And he said, lifelong, your daughter will have this sickness. But these medicines can contain it. And 2,500 rupees, the medicines was given. I am a preacher of the gospel of Jesus. I pray for sick people, people get healed. But there was a question when I am asking myself, God, what can I do now in this situation? As I was getting in the car, I heard a voice. Whom do you trust? Do you trust the medicines? Which is, have you seen how homeo medicines are made? It's basically allopathy kind of uh, some chemicals only, but then they mix it in a diluted way. So it's the doctor mixing it. Now, that's not a computer which is doing like that in the case of a normal allopathy drug manufacturing where everything is precise. This is manual, human. And so the Lord was asking me, do you trust a doctor who just mixed those medicines in front of you or do you trust me? I told Lord, forgive me. I have made you too small. I want to trust your healing power. I want to trust your wisdom. 
my wife got into my car with the baby 2500 rupees was just spent i said grishma the lord is telling me to throw away these medicines she said while i was sitting there so i also felt we should not have come let's throw the medicines away we just took few steps forward in the car there was this koromangala fifth block i think the bda dustbin we put that there that night she was healed for the last 11 years there is no sickness in the body 12 years she'll turn 12 come on if you're clapping for jesus you have to clap well any kind of a darkness which comes on your life i'm telling you if you get the wisdom of god you can easily easily win how many points did i say let me quickly give you two more because time is already running out you can write the references two more it's very interesting boy this one is very interesting everyone may not like it but this is quite interesting let's go to revelations revelations 13 18 revelations is the last book of your bible the last book revelations 13 18 here is wisdom let him who has understanding calculate the number of beast for it is the number of man and his number is 666 i'm not here to explain how satan will look like but i want to tell you when godly wisdom comes upon you you will easily recognize the schemes of the devil in your life you didn't say amen this is a very complex verse which talks about antichrist and the coming of beast and all we will learn about it whenever we have time but if god's wisdom pass upon you the moment there is a scheme of the enemy coming out you will be able to recognize it how many of you have been cheated at least once in your lifetime by the devil 1 2 No, definitely Priyanka. You, I didn't see you raising the hand. That's what I was purposefully looking at you. Okay, so those who are not cheated by the devil, can I see your hands please? Please take them on our cameras. Yeah. Huh? Oh, now no one is there again. The Jesus said, why you have made my house of prayer, house of thieves? don't make our church look like that you stand on one side either you stand and say the devil cheated me at least once in my life or you say devil did not cheat me you are understanding english right should i say in malayalam no so how many of you have cheated at least once by the devil in your lifetime now everyone's hand is going up this is why we need the wisdom of god it happens to everyone because the devil is a deceiver if the devil could deceive adam and eve who were in the glory realm of god how easy was that it was it for the devil to defeat us in our life that is where we need the wisdom of god when the wisdom of god operates the moment the devil's number comes 666 triple numbers through man only it will come that's why the bible also says it's understanding how the devil is going to that is where all pentecostal pastors got it wrong pentecostal pastors are looking into the skies where the antichrist is coming will he come in the spaceship will he come like an astronaut so we are all focusing there by jesus the bible says it is right here only it's a man man it's a spirit which operates through human minds so the moment there is a scheme of the wicked enemy to destroy your life the wisdom of god should operate what is a classic example of that in the time of daniel the moment there was a scheme to cut down the prophecies of god upon the israelites it looked like daniel got promoted it looked like daniel is liked by the king but there was a small scheme you should eat king's food small If I was Daniel I would have think wow this is a blessing. I was a slave all these years. I was a slave. I was locked up. I was a prisoner. But God set me free. Praise God. First time I am eating king's food. Wisdom of God. He said we acknowledge that we serve the king but I don't want this food. Myself Shadrag Meshach and Abednego we four will not touch this food and their caretaker said if you don't eat the food if you become lean the king will kill me he said don't worry don't worry 10 days you see that he went on a daniel day fast daniel fast vegetables and plain water for 10 days 
because not because it was a bad food it is a good food he knew it was the scheme of the enemy to hinder the prophecies of god being fulfilled upon the nation of israel he was not worried about just himself he said we four people are going to stand out when we four stand out the prophecies told about us will not be hindered it will be fulfilled if you understand the scheme of the enemy you could be the saving person in your entire family to bring them to salvation you're not saying an amen you could be that key person when you get the revelation in the wisdom of god and understand the schemes of the enemy it continued throughout the book of daniel this was the only scheme now the second scheme came you need to bow down to nebuchadnezzar daniel said no way and then the lions were the lions dens was prepared and daniel was put into yesterday i joked and said daniel was a vegetarian so the vegetarian realm opened up for the lions and the lion could not eat daniel because daniel was a vegetarian <laughs> it is not the vegetarian realm it's the wisdom of god Amen. what happened when he came out the rule changed what does the rule change now everyone should worship the god of daniel not only that every time there was an issue he was using the wisdom of god to understand the schemes of the enemy i pray in jesus mighty name that none of the spirit filled believers who are listening to my voice will be cheated deceived exploited by the wicked enemy and then break your life but the wisdom of god will operate in every scheme when the devil tries to bring something come on lift up your voices and say an amen and receive it in jesus mighty name how many points now 6 or 7 the last one wisdom brings the fear of the almighty god the fear of the almighty god <clears throat> psalms 111 10 psalms 111 10 you can write the reference down proverbs 17 proverbs 9 10 proverbs 15 33 all these verses wisdom brings the fear of the almighty god what is fear i i don't like to use the word fear it's not fear wisdom brings the reverence towards the almighty god reverence is worship with love worship with love imagine my father is just walking in and i am sitting there what will be the first thing that i'll do i'm the pastor of this church No one knows my father much maybe many of you may not know my father but what will be the first thing that I'll do I'll stand up why am I standing up is he coming with a machine gun and some bodyguards and looking at all people or sitting to shoot <laughs> it, is he doing like that why am I standing because of love and reverence wisdom brings you into the true worship of god because the spirit of wisdom is not there we were formerly traditional christians worshiping with our lips and not with our hearts but when the holy spirit came on to us god changed our hearts he gave us a new heart he filled us with the holy spirit the spirit of wisdom the spirit of understanding so that we can know him and today we don't fear and worship him we love and we worship him shall we stand up for prayer please Can we took the thing I have made you too small I have made you too small in my eyes Oh Lord Forgive me I have believed in the lie that you were unable to help me But now O oh Lord I see my heal my heart and show yourself strong and in my eyes and with my song O oh Lord be my Come on lift up your hands and sing be magnified oh God Be magnified Sing along now You are high and exalted You are high and exalted
exalted and there is nothing and there is nothing you can do oh lord my eyes are on you be magnified oh lord be magnified come on be magnified be magnified you 